In June 1966, Honeywell received the first contract ever awarded for an operational helmet sight system for application to the new Army AH-56A Cheyenne helicopter. Then in March 1967, the Air Force awarded Honeywell the TAC-REACT contract, an airborne reconnaissance system in which the helmet sight system is a key element. The Honeywell helmet sight system enables the pilot to look at a target and thereby automatically integrate the target's location into the aircraft subsystems such as armament, reconnaissance, or navigation. For a fire control system such as the AH-56A, wherever the pilot looks, the guns point. For a reconnaissance system such as TAC-REACT, whenever the crew member looks at a target, its location is determined. Studies undertaken by Honeywell in 1964 indicated that a man's military tactical effectiveness could be significantly improved through a system offering a hands-free visual target location capability. Concentrating on a variety of methods for recording a man's line of sight, Honeywell engineers determined that a helmet sight concept employing an electro-optical technique for surveying helmet-mounted photo detectors aligned to a collimated sight piece, also helmet-mounted, offered the most feasible approach. However, a key question was, can a pilot with a helmet sight be effective at tracking and sighting offset targets while flying at high speeds and low altitudes? To answer this basic question, Honeywell engineers conducted a series of pilot sighting tests at the Naval Ordnance Test Station, China Lake. In a series of high-speed, low-altitude passes at offset targets, a helmet-mounted camera fixed with crosshairs was aligned to a collimated sight piece to record how well the average pilot could track offset targets and to determine if it was feasible to proceed with development of the helmet sight system. Modifying the recording camera, investigators provided for a filter to tint the lens when the pilot actuated a switch to indicate when he thought he was on target. The results indicated that the pilot of a high-speed jet can do an extremely accurate job of sighting and tracking a ground target to fly by. Thus, Honeywell engineers proceeded to fully develop the helmet sight system. Shown here are the basic components of the helmet sight system. The basic system is composed of a helmet sight and sensor assembly, one or more light source assemblies, and an angle conversion unit. These components in an aircraft installation are typically located as shown. The helmet sight and sensor assembly, the light source assembly, the angle conversion unit. The vehicle coordinate reference system is the base from which the helmet sight system measures the man's line of sight angles in terms of the elevation, alpha, and azimuth psi angles. The following scenes describe how the elevation and azimuth angles are measured. A collimated sight piece focused at infinity provides a reticle image to the man. This sight piece is attached to a special sun visor housing. The sun visor housing incorporates two photo detectors, one and two. A fixed distance S separates detectors one and two. The detectors are installed so that a line passing through their sensitive areas is always parallel to the man's line of sight. Now to measure the line of sight angles, we must locate these two detectors in space and determine their positional relationship to the vehicle's reference axis. Here we can see the coordinate system for measuring the azimuth and elevation angles, psi and alpha. The man here is looking down and to his left. Let's study this coordinate system more closely. To determine the azimuth and elevation angles, we need to determine the coordinates Y0 and Z0 of the line of sight vector. However, we already know the magnitude of S because it is a fixed dimension on the helmet. So only Y0 and Z0 remain to be determined. Once Y0 and Z0 are determined, the azimuth and elevation angles can be computed. Y0 
and Z0 are determined by locating detectors 1 and 2 in space. For simplicity, let's focus our attention on the blue YZ plane containing detector 2. The YZ plane containing detector 1 is located directly behind it. We determine the position of the detector in the YZ plane by electro-optically surveying the detector from a fixed reference on the vehicle. Surveying of the two photodetectors is done by means of a light source assembly attached and aligned to the vehicle structure. The light source assembly has two light generators. These are separated by a fixed distance K. Each generator produces a thin fan of collimated light which scans both detectors. The fans of light, whose rotational axes are normal to the YZ plane, are rotated parallel to each other at a constant angular velocity. The light source assembly also incorporates two reference photodetectors. Now we can demonstrate the angle measurement technique. Keep in mind that the problem is to determine azimuth and elevation, psi and alpha, and that we do this by determining the dimensions Y0, Z0, and S. Since S is a fixed dimension, we need only to determine Y0 and Z0. And these dimensions are determined by locating detectors 1 and 2 in space relative to the vehicle's reference axis. To locate detector 1, we determine angles A and B. With angles A and B, and the fixed dimension K, we can locate detector 1 using the law of signs. We will begin now locating detector 1. Note that as the upper fan of light sweeps past detector 1, a photoelectric impulse is generated. Now the computer will measure the time until the fan of light sweeps past its reference photodetector on the light source assembly. Then, the computer multiplies this measured time by the known angular rate of the light fan, and angle A is determined. You recall, we also need to determine angle B. This angle is determined in the same manner as angle A, but by the action of the lower fan of light. Knowing angles A and B, and the fixed distance K, we can now calculate, by the law of signs, the Y1 and Z1 dimensions of detector 1. Detector 2 is located in the same manner as detector 1, providing the dimensions Y2 and Z2. Now we can determine Y0 and Z0 by simply subtracting Y1 from Y2 and Z2 from Z1. With the information Y0 and Z0 and the fixed dimension S, we can now compute azimuth and elevation, psi and alpha. Although the basic Honeywell helmet sight system concept was sound, it still remained to be proven in flight. In February, October, and December 1966, the Army provided a test bed in the form of a UH-1A helicopter for full system testing. The helicopter was equipped with a stabilized optical tracking device or SOTD, and the pilot was equipped with the helmet sight. The pilot's line of sight signals were measured and used to direct the SOTD to aim where the pilot was looking. A camera was fitted to the SOTD to record data for evaluating system accuracy. The first tests conducted by Army project engineers at Aberdeen consisted of both ground and flight tests. During the ground test, Investigators sighted on vehicles moving past on an adjacent roadway at selected speeds. Then investigators took to the air for a series of flights past stationary targets. The targets appearing in these scenes are magnified by 1.8 power. Thus, they are three times larger than they appear to the pilot. This magnification allows Honeywell engineers to identify small errors in accuracy not otherwise identifiable to the naked eye. During these initial tests, alignment bias and interference signals were discovered which prevented obtaining perfect results. 
The alignment bias was caused by an out-of-tolerance part in the eyepiece adjustment mechanism. However, design changes were required to correct the interference problem. Even with the problems, the basic capability of the helmet sight system was verified, and the feasibility of this concept for many airborne applications was firmly established. In October and December 1966, investigators resumed flight tests at Aberdeen. This time, all design deficiencies had been eliminated. As a result, investigators were able to increase the SOTD magnification to eight power so that the smallest of errors in accuracy could be identified. Thus, targets appearing in the scenes are actually 64 times larger than they appear to the pilot. The reticle pattern shown in the test film allows measurement of sighting accuracy in terms of milliradians. The outermost reticle ring has a radius of 10 milliradians. The next ring has a radius of 2 and 1 half milliradians. And the innermost ring has a radius of 1 half a milliradian. A target appearing anywhere in the reticle pattern is within the normal dispersion pattern of suppressive fire weapons. In viewing these flight sequences, the following numerical approximations may help you to judge sighting accuracy. A target appearing on the 10 milliradian ring at 2,000 meters, or approximately one mile, is located within a radius of approximately 50 feet. A target appearing on the 10 milliradian ring at 1,000 meters is located within a radius of approximately 25 feet. The flashes visible in the corners of the film indicate the range in intervals of 1,000 and 500 meters. The film records total error, that is, the sum of pilot sighting error, helmet sight system error, and SOTD error. The total average error from the flight tests was approximately 7 milliradians. The helmet sight system alone has a much smaller error. As these tests demonstrate, the helmet sight system capability provides a man an opportunity for significantly more effective and successful mission accomplishment. In May 1967, Honeywell investigators conducted flight tests with North American Aviation at Columbus, Ohio to prove the feasibility of the helmet sight system for a short-range air-to-air missile application. An electro-optical seeker, already successfully demonstrated by North American in short-range missile applications, was mounted in the nose of a beach aircraft. The seeker's orientation was commanded by a pilot wearing the helmet sight so that wherever the pilot looked, the seeker also looked. Once airborne, the pilot prepared to track the target aircraft, a T-2B trainer. By holding down a button mounted on the aircraft's control stick, the pilot controls the seeker. He acquires the target by placing the helmet sight's reticle image on the target aircraft. Once the seeker is locked on target, a signal tells the pilot to release the button, leaving the seeker to track on its own. In the first test run, the pilot accomplished head-on acquisition of the target aircraft. In these subsequent test runs, he is acquiring and tracking the target aircraft. In order for the seeker to lock on the target, the target must be positioned within the one mil gate located in the center of the horizontal and vertical lines shown in this view through the seeker. This acquisition function is accomplished by the pilot wearing the helmet sight. The target aircraft shown in these scenes is magnified four times. Thus, the target actually appears four times smaller to the pilot in the tracking aircraft. For this short-range air-to-air missile application, these flight tests firmly establish the increased probability of mission accomplishment through application of the helmet sight system to improve the tactical effectiveness of the pilot. Here are some of the potential helmet sight applications already investigated by Honeywell engineers. Fire control, such as a helicopter fire control system, enables a crew member to have a hands-free direct sight capability for increased effectiveness in accurate suppressive fire missions. 
ground target attack, such as a target reacquisition system, enables the pilot to turn around and attack targets sighted during initial flyby. An offset attack system enables a pilot to deploy an air-to-ground missile to strike a target sighted on initial flyby. Aerial reconnaissance, such as an aerial reconnaissance and intelligence system, enables a pilot to aim cameras and other sensors, as well as determine target locations. A hunter-killer system enables a pilot to provide target position data to companion strike aircraft. Target acquisition, such as a laser aiming system, enables a pilot to aim a laser to illuminate targets and determine their range. In addition to improving a man's opportunity for more successful mission accomplishment, the helmet sight system was selected for the AH-56A and TAC REACT applications because of operational advantages to pilot and ground crews. Advantages such as pilot freedom of movement. There is no mechanical linkage to the pilot's helmet. Pilot safety. The headset features a breakaway design and shatterproof eyepiece. High accuracy with less than 10 milliradians of error. Reliability. The system has a predicted 5,000 hours MTBF. Maintainability. All devices are interchangeable using standard hand tools. Thus, the system is in constant readiness. One-time alignment. The system is aligned on installation only. Byte. Built-in test equipment which denotes device failure and eliminates special ground support equipment at forward bases. Low weight. The lightweight design enables a pilot to perform his normal operations without discomfort. Today, after system verification determined from actual flight tests, the helmet sight system is being delivered in prototype quantities. Honeywell offers operational hardware and guaranteed performance and is currently proposing the system for various military applications. The helmet sight system adds new tactical effectiveness to our airborne strike capability and was developed with one goal in mind, to make the man more effective in a combat environment.